be here, Cliff, and let's uh, reminisce about 1982, the Isles Canucks Stanley Cup Final. Even to this day, a lot of people come up to me and talk about that 82 series. I just remember, you know, the, the team seemingly just getting better and better every year. Going into the playoffs, we felt someone's going to have to play really well to, to, to beat us. It's a hard-working team, you know. Uh, everyone showed up. They knew what they had to do. They knew, knew what their job was to do, but it was a hard-working team. They were one of the, in that mix of, of, of real good teams. And, um, you know, we were going through our own uh, playoff wars, I guess you'd say, in the Eastern Conference, you know. And uh, there was a real distinct style of play um, back then between the East and the West. They had uh, momentum on their side. And, and in, the, in the playoffs, anything can happen. you got to be ready for it. And, you know, Vancouver took full advantage of it. You know, every, every series they, they played, it seemed like they, they were always the underdog. And they played that, uh, that card real well. This is set to have overtime. It's anybody's game now. At the time of the clock, too, I did not think the Islanders would take the chance that they took. And uh, Harold Snaps is, is our defensive behind the puck, and we're, we're making a standard breakout coming out. From a time I took two, three steps going forward with the puck as Harold was, and all of a sudden I looked back and the puck's behind my net. It's something that I'll never forget as a player. That was the difference in the game, and they were that much more skilled than us, and they had an elite player like Mike Bossy. We flew into Vancouver, and uh, right from uh, the fire trucks that greet us on the runway to, uh, to getting inside and the media and talking to them, uh, it took us like a good three hours to get through the airport. It was a great, great uh, atmosphere in the, in the building. You know, they were really, you know, behind their team. And, you know, every, every opportunity they could, they'd be waving those towels. And we just kind of have to put a blind eye to it. And we'd say, you know, that's kind of fun for the home team, you know, but it's, uh, we, we, we just can't get uh, distracted by it at all. I don't think there was one player in our dressing room that did not feel the emotion and the excitement and the passion in the building. Uh, the two games in, in Vancouver, um, I, I've, I've told people I think might have been two of the best games our, our team had ever played that I, I was a part of. Brian Pucky looking for someone in the slot. Putman shot, loose puck, they score! You know, Mike Bossy, <laughs> I still say the best, best goal scorer I ever saw, um, ever played against. The goal he scored, he was both feet off the ice, still you know, uh, backhanded it uh, by Brodeur. I mean, it was. Uh, no offense to Bobby Orr's goal, um, you know, against St. Louis, but, you know, Mike Bossy, that goal was every bit as good. The New York Islanders are the 1982 Stanley Cup champions. The fact that people say, you know, like, well, you know, they're, they're champions, but they're, they're kind of like low-key champions. They're not up there, you know, pumping their chest and pounding their, you know, the chest and saying, ah, oh, we're the greatest, we're the greatest, we're the greatest. But, you know, we felt like strutting at times, but we certainly didn't want to, like, uh, demean or, you know, belittle any of our opposition at all. I think it gave us a little bit more respect and a stepping stone to get where we're at now uh, as a team. 1-0 Canucks after one.